work did we get in here? How would we do that? Good sir. Wow, never has the uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea uh, part of the Get and Git intro been so apropos than today <laughs> of this segment. Uh, so what, some context for what we got in Git. It is all about translating dynamic data for multilingual stuff. Uh, not all of it, but it is all about translating and localizing your content. Localization website. challenges in yes. the core. Uh, which has been brought to our attention as one of several things that has uh, been an ongoing problem that we have given less attention to than we should, uh, which is undoubtedly true, because we are, in fact, ten humans in a room uh, that, that also have, have many things to do to pay the bills. So sometimes things do fall by the wayside more than they should. So for that, we apologize. And uh, we also don't always have all the answers, That's uh, true. just like you. Sometimes we know that something just doesn't look quite right or doesn't feel like the best idea. And uh, it doesn't mean that we have a better one. It just means, I don't know, we've done some things right. And to us, this one looks wrong. Uh, and we also know that as we get bigger and bigger and the code base gets more and more mature, the more we take into the core that we then have to undo, there is a... Uh, it's exponentially more painful to undo and yes. explain those decisions in t over time. We do find it difficult from time to time because uh, when we were young and <laughs> carefree and nimble. And, and nimble, and there was a hundred yeah. people using Concrete Five, it was very easy to say, "Yeah, I'll we'll give it a try. Yeah, we'll Whoa, it out let's undo work. that." But as we get hundreds of thousands and millions of sites powered with it, we have to be very sensitive to, well, this probably isn't the right way, but something's better than nothing. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's way more background than you probably need. Let's bring up some of these pull requests and kind of get into the, the guts. Yeah, so in the, all of these are by M. Locati, by the way, so thank you for all of these pull requests. There are more in there. Uh, he is a trooper and does a lot of work in, uh, in GitHub. And all of these at the beginning of this list are really about localizing date and time. So I think it was in 5.6, we included um, Zend Date, which works with, uh, with wor which works with Zend Locale to localize dates. So, you know, display months and things like that in the proper, in the proper uh, language and, and things like that. The and, wrong order for Europe, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so, uh, we uh, many of these pull requests are just him going through all the places where we show dates and we already had been using constants for that so if you cared about changing the way your dates were just displayed throughout your site you could definitely do that but uh they weren't uh translated so he's gone through and started to use this date helper that we introduced in all of the different places and okay. uh they're all uh they're all very easy to understand and so they were easy to approve we just hadn't uh you know, they, they're not super old, so we had done 561, I believe, and did a large pass on pull requests, and then these started coming in, and as we've been working on 57, we'd let them languish yeah. a little so these bit. have been kind of, yeah. in our, we'll, yeah. we'll include that when we're ready for yeah. it. So these are Probably none of the... communicated that as fully as we should, yeah. but... Uh, these are none these of the... Uh, to deal with. These are none of the seven-month uh, seven pull requests. These are, these are more of the one- to two-month, sure. you know, we've been working away variety. Um, so they're making it into the master branch, and uh, they'll be included when, you know, it looks like we'll do a 5613 at some point in the future. So uh, they will be included in that and uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, that is, uh, these are more M. Locati stuff. This is not specifically translation. I just pulled a lot of stuff that he had. But, uh, you know, he's just fixing, fixing lots, of, uh, lots of little things that are easy to approve and, you know, add value over time. Nice. And uh, you know, as we continue in there, it's all this is all just the same Keep localizing, uh, nice, localizing nice, nice. dates. Same same deal here. Same deal there. And as we continue into the uh, as we continue into the last one, we probably can segue into a, an interesting conversations. Ah, show attribute username. This guy. There we go. The attribute one is, is useful, but it's not really what we were talking about. 
this one is starting to get into what we I didn't approve any of the oh, this is the where video. we're stuck so no we, we approve this but we're oh. moving into stuff that is challenging this, okay. this guy is a is was pretty much a no-brainer but it's where things started to feel a little uh, a little challenging so a little bit of a little bit of background what this does is it displays block types in a user's language when they are adding them to a page or when they see them in the dashboard that seems like a pretty pretty innocuous thing a pretty pretty obvious thing certainly right. um, and to give anyone who is not uh, an internationalization pro or a strong developer a little context what we're talking about here with this T function uh, is the way that you generally deal with with internationalizing apps is there are strings which are bits of text that you would use throughout the program and instead of just having a, a button that says print you you wrap that label print in a function called T yep and that then pulls that label out and gives you a centralized list of well here's all of the words or strings that uh, need to be translated for a specific language and so someone could go through and say ah oh, string in German is I, you know, it's been, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. Psychopathic. Um, <laughs> so you translate it, and then, and then it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mail merge, basically. Uh, yes. And so that works really great. Uh, it works really great on, on actual English or whatever your source language strings are that you're adding in code. So when you see, you know, when you're going through your site or, or your add-on and you, you see an actual word that you have typed in a language just as, a, as text somewhere, it's really great you just wrap that text in a T function and you know that it will be listed in a centralized translation spot and if a translation exists in the current language for that, it will be transparently mm -hmm. swapped in. No questions asked, no problem. And then when we build a new version of Concrete 5, we spit out all those strings and yep. put it up on a third-party service called TransFX. Yep. And there are uh, different language managers on TransFX that uh, have volunteered their time to go through and translate all those strings. So as we make new versions, you know, we add, we run the, we run the, uh, the script against it, and you know, every new version is adding a few hundred strings. So every new string that didn't exist before gets added to the top. And you know that you certain you get the notification that there are 200 new strings to translate, and mm -hmm. it works. Bob Trump. Now, if you have add-ons, hypothetically, they can wrap their uh, strings with this T function as well, they and can. then they could have their own exactly. uh, yes. language file that went with it. So that all makes sense. But where we get, you know, stuck isn't the right word, but where we're we're, we're struggling is. Uh, that's a fixed list. I mean, it's a long list, but it's a fixed list of stuff. And so the, the challenge that we're having, I think it's a real challenge that needs to be solved, is look, there's dynamic data that's not, it's not front end content that I might just enter in a different language, but it's stuff that it's site specific and dynamic and grows significantly over time. Yeah. That uh, people are suggesting we should wrap that stuff with a T string as well. So uh, so if you go back to, the fur, to that last pull request, Matt, this is like the, the most sensible wrapping of dynamic data in a, in a T function. So if you actually scroll down just a little bit, you can see that the uh, BT description is being pulled from a database for a particular block type, and the same with BT name, and that goes into the database in English mm -hmm. um, when you install Concrete 5. And then when it is, it's now being wrapped in the T function, um, and we include the block types in the list of translatable strings. So this pull request totally works and on its face you can say like well what took you so long and that's that's fair because while this is coming from a database it's not tremendously dynamic you can't there's no interface in the dashboard that lets you change the description or change yeah. the name you could if you go into the core and and rescan those blocks after changing it you could change that stuff and it is being pulled from the database but wrapping it in the t function has really very little downside because you know it is it is relatively fixed it's just not coming from it's just not text. Yeah, so you're adding the descriptions for the blocks and it's like well that's a bunch more data but it's it's a known amount and so so be it and we do this also in the dashboard we wrap the dashboard page names in mm -hmm. a t function so that you can see that even though those are coming from the database um the dashboard page names and stuff like that are localized um but again, it's, it's at this point that it starts getting less and less easy to just say, oh, that's an obvious thing. So one of the pull requests in here is dealing, doing the same thing with attributes. And on its face, that seems sane because you have stuff like exclude from nav, sure. meta title, etc. These sure. are attributes that are going to be in every Concrete 5 installation and they get installed in the core and their strings are included in the, the way they get included. The strings are included in the language files as well. But 
we just wrapping the output of those things is a little challenging because you can add to that list of attributes right. and you're wrapping those strings in a T function. And right, so there's some attributes that come with the core. Two from now, that makes sense. Why would you not want that translated? No biggie. But then attributes are used by a lot of people to do really complicated things. I want to build a digital asset management system and start adding like, you know, how many people are in the picture, what color, and and some of those choices might have dozens of answers. It might be a select list with, with 100 answers. Yeah. Uh, and so do we really want to just wrap everything in this T function yeah. and, and hope that there's no performance hit and hope that like, like what would you do with, yeah. with, with all that data? Where would that be translated? And, and how yeah, would that work? yeah, and then you have to, you know, if you could get those, you could you could get an add-on. I think there is a third-party add-on for this, and our internationalization enterprise add-on handles this too. You could get an add-on that lets you add to those um, translatable files from your Concrete Five site. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you um, added an attribute and we wrapped the attributes in T strings, you could go into those translation files and add the name of your attribute, and that would automatically uh, that would automatically translate it. But uh, but yeah, not everyone has that add-on installed, and it's it's uh, it's challenging. You, the select attribute with the options is another excellent. That's, a, that's not just the name of the attribute; that's the actual content of the attribute too. Because how do you localize those the options in a select menu, mm -hmm. for example? Like it's uh, that's tricky. Yeah, uh, and it, you one could say you could take a piecemeal approach, and and we probably will, and certainly we will with this block type thing, uh, but. Do you want is is this a case where something is better than nothing, or is that really not the case? Because you, if you have to undo that something and then tell everyone to do something else, yeah. is that really fine? I mean, I don't know if there's going to be an easy answer on this. These are kind of decisions yeah. that we typically make, uh, type of conversations that we typically have uh, later in the day uh, <laughs> with a whiteboard, and uh, you know, sometimes it is really just the the, the choice of two evils. Um, Usually how we do this uh, is, is, is we try to break it into smaller problems. So what is the underlying beef that, uh, I mean beef, but what, what is the thing that, and it's not just us, other people have looked at this pull request and some of ones and be like, this does not feel yeah. uh, like And the, the, to be clear, this is not the block type one, but there is another one in there that wraps attribute names in T strings on the front end. and. That's rubbing. That that feels wrong. It feels wrong. Right. I don't know. And wrong might even be too strong of a word. It just doesn't feel like a slam dunk. It yeah. feels like, oh wow, God, I, I guess that worked. Or a yeah, uh, holistic solution. Oh, 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 there, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> why? I would argue, perhaps for two different reasons. Uh, one concern in my mind is a performance concern. I yeah. don't know how real that is, but it just seems like, boy, really, you're wrapping. I mean, how many times you calling this function and. Yeah, you know, we, we, we definitely don't build for performance first. Generally, I mean, we've that's said many true. times we build for flexibility and uh, ease of use, and then performance. That's the uh, the order that we generally go with. Get it, get it right, then yeah, then make it a fast. balance between. But we're not sure this is right. <laughs> and performance is like we'll clean that up later. But that's kind of burned us in the past. And uh, you know, five six one two yeah. uh, had a fair amount of energy going into tr trying to get this thing run faster on GoDaddy and uh, yeah. You know that's that's a problem that we all get. So it's it's all well and good that you know people in Europe have this issue and and, and they need that solved and that's true. But if that's going to make uh, people everywhere else have new issues, that's not something that we can just blithely uh, say yes to. So I don't know if that performance thing is, is a huge concern or not. It could simply be like, no, dude, you know we, we we're calling thousands of functions and every page load anyways. Get over it. Fair enough. But I guess that would be one silo of concern. Uh, that we would that, that I think we have as yeah. we look at this as a solution. Uh, the other the other way to think about the problem with the GG is this really the right way to do it is is again just to me is 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 the interface around dealing with it. It's like if I'm adding attributes, yeah. Like, do I really? I mean, I guess there is that third party add on, and we yeah. have our own add ons that give you a spot to manage these PO files. But there's something nice about the existing solution in that look, you can give someone a language file and it's everything that they need. Yeah. And as soon as you start you know, basically building into the core uh, the assumption that look, there might be more dynamic data that you're going to translate through this. It seems from uh, from a, a user experience standpoint, you're kind of blending modes, right? And now we're saying, uh, look, you know, the, the actual content for your site, you can just manage in whatever language that you want. Uh, we we generally suggest for managing multiple languages that you do it across multiple trees, and we've got a free add-on that that helps you. Uh, 
uh, keep relationships between those trees so your, your contact us page in Spanish is you know knows where the contact page is in English uh, and that all works then we've got an enterprise version of it that gives you workflow tools on top of it but then is that like how does that jive with the fact that you might be making content on that page as an attribute yeah. that you now need to go translate somewhere else yeah, entirely? Yeah, central it seems dashboard kind of console. Uh, or you know, another way to do it is you know attributes get you know one to however many languages you have they get display names in those languages on each attribute. You know we know so actually build the, support for internationalization into, into the, the attribute yeah, model because it's yeah. only attributes that ever need to do that. Yeah. So that would be another yeah. way to think and about like it. And like that, you know, that is something that we've thought about doing but you know as you can tell from that solution like that's not an insignificant amount of work and so that's where you know if that's the way to go that's what we should commit to but it would help to have we this should, we should really think about it and, and I think that would make sense if um, really if it was only attributes where this problem <laughs> but then applied. you get you get groups people want to do the same thing with groups that's Oops. another pull request that's sitting yeah. in there it's the exact well, same issue you know, yeah 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 so there are certain areas where our you can make custom permissions now too, right? Yes, you can, That's and you've next, got yeah right? task permissions. Task are, permissions, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, so maybe it really is um, wrapping all that stuff in t strings and you know figuring out a way to get that inter that stuff enter into sure. that build a yeah. A, one of the we should we should build that into the core. Maybe it was already we already yeah. have a free add-on that doesn't now, that. I, we could build that in. So an, another uh, the one reason that we haven't really had this conversation so much, even though Concrete Five has been localizable or localized since two thousand nine, is it's only been in the last few versions that we have, or maybe in the last year and a half, two years, that we have given you the ability to switch languages for one install. So. We've given you the ability to run Concrete 5 in German since nearly the very beginning, mm -hmm. but it's always been, well, my site always is German. English, yeah. or my site is German, etc. So then if, it, if it's one language, you can run the whole thing in another language, and then you just n rename your groups yeah, into the, yeah, the, your, your the groups are target language. That language yeah. yeah, and same with attributes. It's the only thing that's really become difficult is the ability to switch on the fly. So this is a reason why this is you know more of an issue now than it used to be, is you sure. can switch languages in the admin console. Um, Which is tough, though, because as Concrete 5 matures, that, that border between, well, look, there's the editing experience, and then there's the front-end content experience kind of changes a little bit. Like, like the attribute value is the perfect example. Yeah. Right? Like, I might add an attribute, the handle for it can be whatever. You can train someone that, look, that's, that's color. It's just written in English, or that's color. It's just written in German. Yeah. You're using it in English. But if the actual value is displayed on the page somewhere, yeah. then, well, that needs to be translated. So... Yeah, it's a tricky wicket. Yeah. So I'm curious, does anybody have any bright ideas in our chat room on this? How do uh, how does our competition deal with this? And has anybody uh, smarter than us solved this? I mean, is this really one of those, like, it's just a beast of a problem, and so you just deal with it that way? I mean, that, 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 sometimes in life, you just got to dig a hole. And you can stare at the ground and go, there's got to be a better way so you're blue in the face, but you can also just pick up the shovel and dig. So and, you know, if you, commit, this. if you commit to, you know, wrapping this dynamic stuff in T-strings, you can, you can tell yourself, look, this is only really going to be kind of an extra administrative challenge for sites that are running, you know, big real sites in multiple languages. So they might have the expertise to, you know, deal with this secondary translation. The interface problem I'm yeah. worried about is less of a problem. Yeah. As long as we're not creating a huge performance hit, or we can it's mitigate that in some yeah. way, then it's okay. I don't know. I mean, that might be it. That might be it. Uh, so I guess the, the two things are, if you wonder why we don't just blithely approve things that come into Git, it's because conversations like this are, in fact, happening here, as, as we have the time and attention, and we yeah. will, uh, as we are today, try and make those conversations more transparent. Uh, the second thing is, well, I help. What should we do <laughs> on this? Gang. What do you think, Matt? Have you, have you been watching the chat room on this? I have. Uh, it looks like we have a comment from Chad Strat. That's the only one I've seen that's uh, all kind of relevant yeah. to what you guys are talking about. Uh, cool. He says, maybe attributes can be translated differently. In other words, process them separately uh, to their own at lang table. Um, I think that's what you were suggesting. Yeah. It's just attributes. We could just build it into the core. But I think I'm, I'm wondering if that is... Uh, it's tough because there are more Cut things. Yeah. The, the permissions, are to I hadn't thought about that. That's totally valid. Groups, um, yeah. And as we continue to go forward, yeah. it's only going to get worse. As we talk about the gathering block. Oh, yeah, no, be, we, yeah. new composer stuff. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yeah, I mean, if you really, yeah. yeah, I mean, 
that switching the entire backend interface between stuff, it's difficult to want to build columns for everything that you would want. Every, every in potential the interface language in the too, interface seems like a rough, bad yeah. play. Yeah. So as we're talking about it, that seems less and less. I mean, that's certainly the that's, that's certainly goes. the thing yeah. that I, uh, you know, the first thing that came to my mind. But as I sit with it, I don't even know how the admin would work for some of those yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, it's this delicate balance of you don't want to over-engineer your solution so it's a, a machine that solves all problems but actually does nothing. Uh, you know, but it takes a lot of energy to run. <laughs> but, that's, uh, but on the other hand, you don't want to just, you know, just just cook your dinner on a campfire and not, not have any tools at all. So, Got a comment from here in T who adds, uh, maybe we could only uh, do it for attributes if internationalization is enabled. Yeah, we do, the way that the localization, some of the, the performance issue um, is mitigated in that um, if you're running in a, the source language, if you're only running in one language, we're not passing any, or if you're only running in, in the English locale, we're not passing, we're not even enabling internationalization, we're just passing straight through. So we do have to, we would have to add these T functions, but the overhead on a T function is very, very low if you're not actually using it. Right, so maybe my concerns yeah. are... It would, you know, it, it would make a, make a hit for, you know, international sites, but maybe that's just what's required when you're, you know, if you're... I'm okay with that. You know, if you're if you're running on site in many languages and, and, and you're in Germany and you're angry about it, get a bigger <laughs> server. Sorry, bro. But, um... I just can't allow that to impact Sally Sue's website on GeoCity or on, yeah. on, on uh, GoDaddy um, dramatically. I mean, a little hit. I mean, it's certainly not the first time we've done that, but um, yeah. we just want to be very sensitive about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think what we'll do is um, we'll get Mike to uh, start a thread on this. Mike's going to try to uh, help us kind of uh, consolidate some of this. I think another challenge for us is that we see. A lot of these things kind of emerge in a very granular format. I mean, as you've seen, there's a, trick a dozen pull requests and, and, and just as many uh, forum threads across beta and community leaders and uh, developing with Concrete Cloud in the forum. So uh, Mike is going to kind of cross-link all those together into one thread, and we will repost uh, the, the summation of our... Uh, well, it's not confusion. It's just kind of our... Well, we really like it when solutions have like a grace to them, and it's yeah. just like you know, I just did this, and it's perfect, and like this one just doesn't quite feel that way. And sometimes it's just it's what it is. So that's the way it's starting to feel to me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, discussion on that would be great. <laughs>